car we're dealing with on this episode is the Crusher Impala, a 1969 Chevy that's been a favorite on Roadkill and Roadkill Garage ever since the episode of Roadkill, where we brought over our buddies from Mighty Car Mods in Australia, and we wanted to show them the most ludicrous combination of an American land yacht with big horsepower. And we took them down and did some crazy burnouts. I knocked a tire off the wheel doing burnouts in this thing with a one-legger. It was fantastic. Here's sort of the combination on the car. The engine is a big block Chevrolet. It started out as a 454, but it is stroked and overboard to 498 cubic inches. Now, the thing is really, really tame. It has a small camshaft, small Brodick cylinder heads. It has a Wyand 871 supercharger on it, but I'm only running about five PSI, which honestly is barely enough to overcome the parasitic loss of the blower itself. But it makes pretty good power, makes killer torque, runs on 91 octane, and the reason it's so tame is that I want to be able to get in this car and drive it absolutely anywhere. And to that end, we made some other mods. It does just have a turbo 400 transmission, so no overdrive. But the rear end is a Ford 9-inch from Quick Performance. It's got 350 rear gears in it. And in another episode of Roadkill Garage, Steve and I upgraded the thing with all QA1 suspension. We did take it to the track, and this thing has run 1090s in the quarter mile. And you can drive it on the highway 75 miles an hour anywhere. The problem is, we've had a bunch of trouble with these carburetors on this thing. And so, I one day just made the decision, you know what, Steve? I want to put fuel injection on this thing. And so that's what we're going to do in this episode. Steve, we're known as dinosaurs. You got to admit it. Well, it's like opposite day, but there has to be a good reason. There are a number of good reasons. Let's hear them. Man, I like the way you just served that up to me. Oh, well, yeah, I got to tee you <laughs> up so you can knock them down. Well, you know what the big impetus of this is? And it's ridiculous. Every time this car is stored, the carburetors clog up the needles and seats because of California, like high ethanol gas, yeah. and this thing floods. It dumps fuel into the engine. But it's not just that. I was also offended by the embarrassing performance of the Crusher Impala at Roadkill Nights last year. And we had that shootout with all the other hosts and we were all doing burnouts and donuts. And this thing couldn't do donuts because the fuel slosh killed the engine. Right, I remember that. It you was can't a, have that. It was awful. I mean, I was embarrassed and I wasn't even in the car. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It was bad. You know, normally Steve and I are carburetor guys. We can rebuild them blindfolded. We can tune them for anything. But for whatever reason, this thing has fought me. And so I'm going to say we're going to take the CFI as an experimental step. I'm not saying it's going to be on there forever because I'm a little worried it's not going to look right for me. And it's throttle body, so it yeah. is kind of like a little baby step. Well, I think, and that's another key point here, is with the 871 supercharger, yeah. the throttle body is the right way to go because I don't have a manifold with injectors down below the blower, right. and you have to have fuel entering the top of the blower to lubricate and cool the supercharger, and so throttle bodies make sense. We're gonna be installing Holly Sniper EFI. It's their two by four setup. The other thing at Roadkill Nights is I almost ran Finnegan and I into the wall because the power, power steering, steering pump is intermittent, or maybe it's the box, I hope not, and it sits too high in the back. It's, it's kind of coilover, right? Yeah, so, so we just got to adjust, adjust that, that down. Yeah. So that's what's going to go on in this episode. But first, we have to drive from here over to Hot Rod Ranch in Lompoc, California, where we're going to be wrenching on this thing. Should I see if it starts? Okay. I think it's running good. All of a sudden, it's running pretty good. How are we going to know for sure? <laughs> so fun. Yeah. Sounded clean. Yep. I know. It's running better than it has in a I long know. time. Now, this car is just awesome. But yeah. look, it's cruising at 16 to 1 right now. I'm looking at the O2 sensor that I've got here on the dash. And it's cruising pretty lean, which is kind of okay as long as there's not a load on it. What if you're accelerating a little bit? Let's see what it does. Let's see where the power valve opens right there. Oh, uh, yeah. And now 11, it's cruising eight. 11 8. Will the EFI be able to match the performance of the carburetor? That's the question. We made it to Hot Rod Ranch, and man, is this thing fun to drive. That's really, <laughs> really nice. Uh, annoyingly, 
it ran better than it has in a long time. There's nothing wrong with these carburetors right now. I think you're right. Forever. It seems a little bit irritable. It's because it runs so good, and we're about to change it. First thing we're going to do is remove the hood just so you can see better what we're about to do. Let that fall. Stick it up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's going to be really hard to say goodbye to all of this stuff. It's so nice and retro correct. I did all of this when I was the editor of Hot Rod Magazine and when this engine was initially in my Crusher Camaro. That yellow car, it was super cool with this engine in it. So we're going to go from like 70s looking greatness to more modern greatness and hopefully running a little bit more efficiently. Our process here is going to be removing the carburetors and linkage and everything. And initially we're going to install two Holley Sniper throttle bodies. These are like the self-learning kind of EFI. You can use them as a single four barrel on a regular four barrel intake manifold. They also sell the two by four kit, which is what we are using. And later on in the episode, we're gonna have to do a little bit of wiring, upgrading the fuel system, stuff like that. All right, out with the carburetors, in with the throttle bodies. One carb off. There we go, simple as that. So this is a Roots Supercharger, positive displacement blower. Basically, it rotates, and there's two rotors inside that rotate like this, and they compress air to the outside of the case and shove it in the engine. Basically, because you're shoving more air into the engine, you can burn more fuel, and that makes power. People think boost makes power. It's actually the extra fuel that makes power. The carburetors are off and we're gonna get right to the visual part and bolt on our throttle bodies. On this setup, there is a dedicated front throttle body and a rear one. The rear one has got all of the stuff on it, all of the plugs and wires and the idle air control motor. All of the computer stuff and all of the sensors that it's going to use, with the exception of coolant temperature and oxygen sensor, are built into the throttle bodies, so that's kind of cool. Now, they sell this for both tunnel rams and also for draw-through superchargers, like the 671 or the 871. You can also get single four barrels that are set up so that you can have a blow-through supercharger or turbo, but for the draw-through supercharging, this thing has a map sensor in it as well, manifold absolute pressure which is basically a boost sensor so that it knows to add more fuel under boost. But to do that, you have to set it up so that it has a boost reference, meaning you have to take a little plug out of the front of the throttle body right here, and you have to replace it with a fitting that actually doesn't come in the kit. I ordered that separately because I read the instructions in advance. And then you have to put a set screw here to hold the fitting in, and they suggest that you peen that a little bit so that the set screw doesn't chuck itself into your blower under vibration, which sounds like a good idea to me. So I'm going to do that now. What do you think? How does it look, Steve? It looks fantastic. You think so? Yes. All right, you have to have the rear throttle body tell the front one what to do. So you plug in the injector harness on each side. What I'm doing here is I'm going to install the linkage bar that connects the forward and rear throttle bodies. And this is adjustable so that you can synchronize the position. It's really easy to do. Just rotate the bar until the bolt slips right into position and there's a lock nut that goes on the back side and that part of it's going to be done the rest of the linkage is going to be pretty tricky because the stock linkage was a rod which activated the throttle way down low at the base of the manifold and we're going to have to switch to a cable assembly and a new pedal which is going to operate the throttle linkage up here at the top of the blower and it's going to take a little work to get all that installed and functioning properly linkage bar installed. Oosh. That kind of has an early level of satisfaction on the installation because you can already see what it's going to look like. I think it looks good and it'll function fantastic. Steve's wrapping up the throttle linkage. Now let's get into the fuel system. Anytime that you're changing from carburetors to EFI, you're gonna have to up the fuel pressure. As an example, my carburetors are running at six PSI and Holly recommends that the Super Sniper goes up to 58 and a half PSI. This car already has this whole arrangement inside the tank. Now I always recommend if you have to run an electric fuel pump, which you do with EFI, that you run it inside the tank. It helps keep it cooler and it's gonna make it last longer longer than one outside on the frame rail. This is an Aeromotive Phantom setup. It's a Phantom 340. 
40, which is 340 liters per hour. And the interesting thing with these fuel pumps is that they have different horsepower ratings depending on if they're EFI or carbureted because the fuel pump has to work harder if it's pumping more pressure for EFI and therefore can support less horsepower overall. The other thing you'll see in the Aeromotive catalog is that they'll rate the horsepower for the pump lower, EFI supercharged versus not. And the reason for that is they're assuming that you've got port EFI, the injectors in the manifold, and therefore you've got boost in the manifold supercharged, and that boost is working one-to-one -one against the fuel pressure trying to come out of the pintle. So again, the fuel pump has to work harder, it's capable of less horsepower. In this setup, that's not a problem, it's all right up top. And so it's gonna be able to support the full 850 horsepower that the 340 liter per hour pump will deliver. Now the rest of the fuel system here, I've got rubber hose running all the way up to the front that is not technically drag strip legal, but I'm not really worried about that for this car and I've got it all tied up so that it's safe. But if you look at this filter right here, look how black it is. I believe that is rubber goop coming off the inside of the fuel hose clogging the filter, some of it's getting through, and that's probably why we had so much flooding problems with the carburetor. The other thing is this fuel pressure regulator, which is for the carburetors, is an Aeromotive A1000, or I call it an R2-T2. It's capable of up to 15 PSI. Therefore, I'm gonna be changing to this Holly regulator, which can go up to 90 PSI, and obviously I'll be setting it at the recommended 58 and a half. I've also got a Holly filter. The filter is critical for this Super Sniper because the holes where the gas shoots out are very, very small. So any particles can plug that or the pintle in the fuel injector. This is a Holly 10 micron filter. All right, let me get into it. I'm gonna have to figure out where I'm gonna mount this doohickey and how I'm gonna plumb all the hoses. What I've done is I've removed the stock pedal assembly. I've got this aftermarket unit, which is a cable, which gives us a lot more flexibility as far as routing. I've located where I want to mount this. I've got to drill a couple of holes, bolt this up. Then I'll drill a hole for the cable to come through the firewall and set it up to mount in the proximity of the throttle bodies. Get that all hooked up and adjusted, and then we'll have go pedal. I've got the holes drilled for the pressure regulator, but I'm waiting for some fittings on that. So meanwhile, I'm starting to plumb the fuel system. I'm using rubber line, but it is Earl's Vapor Guard. Here's what's special about that. The ethanol that's in modern gasoline, and I guess the gasoline itself just makes cheap rubber fuel line like all gushy. The Vapor Guard has multiple layers in it, and there's a layer in there that won't let the gas evaporate. And so it's good for E85 and ethanol and stuff like that. It's also 225 PSI. The other thing that I got for it is some special fittings that Earl's makes just for this hose. I know that it works because I've used it before and it also has the fuel injection high pressure clamps on it. I just dialed in the fuel system. We put the new regulator on here. This is dash eight in, and then it has a dash six that's splitting into each one of these. Steve finished up the linkage and the cable and the pedal. Now that we're done with all the sort of mechanical part of it, we're moving on to electrical. More wires than we're actually gonna use. It looks intimidating. Yeah, there's, there's not, not that many. This whole harness right here is for custom stuff that you can do through the EFI. The brown one here is tack feed. All of these are either to control nitrous systems, which is actually pretty trick. Right. There's an AC solenoid one that kicks the throttle you up. You have a lot AC. of trigger wires too, don't you? No, it's no. actually not much. What's gonna happen on this wiring harness this is going to go to the TAC output on the MSD, which tells the thing, you know, RPM and everything. This feeds the electric fuel pump. There's the relay for it. And then there's connectors for the battery. And we're not using anything else. Okay. I'm procrastinating doing all the wiring. I just showed Steve and there's more work to be done that isn't wiring. Yeah. <laughs> there's two sensors that you have to hook up with the Super Sniper, one of which is this coolant temperature sensor. What we're gonna do is have Steve use an impact to pull this pipe plug out of the intake manifold and then I'm gonna quickly swoop the sensor in to plug it because we're too lazy to drain coolant out of the radiator. So this is gonna puke coolant everywhere. 
Oh, it didn't oh. leak at all. Oh, this is the wrong size. What we had is a little mismatch between our fitting, which is 3 8 pipe tap, and the hole in the block, which is one half. Fortunately, there's a thing called a bushing, which will adapt the two. We're gonna screw this on here, and then that will screw it to the block. Okay. All right, coolant temperature sensor done. One of the key sensors for the fuel injection system is right here. It's called the O2 sensor, and what it does is it measures the free oxygen in the exhaust system. So to screw that in, we have to add a bung into the exhaust pipe. So I'm gonna drill a hole and weld this in. Bung is done. We're almost converted from carburetors, except for our price and complexity, I would say. I'm done as carb guy. Really? I'm all about the EFI. That's a big statement. Yeah. I'm also super thrilled with the new alternator. Yeah. I'm super thrilled with the new stance. Thing looks wicked. Oh, way better. I don't like the power steering. Well, it doesn't work. It's no good. Yep. Next thing, we're headed out to the donut shop. Let's go. Ready for the snappy fire up? Hit it. Nice. Good. All right, Steve, remember my main gripe about the carburetors, which is oh, why I, I wanted to get by? Yeah, I mean, we couldn't do donuts in this thing before. It's just blood and blood. Exactly. I'm really upset the power steering still isn't fixed. But nonetheless... Can you do a donut in? That's my question. I feel like we can. modulation. I feel like it's fixed. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it had no problem whatsoever. It's perfect. I know. Want to do burnout for distance? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. It's fun. It does everything perfectly. Yep. Wow. The EFI is great. Yeah, you can't beat that, man. It's awesome. Everything's still super happy. Yeah, look at that water temperature. It's ice cubes. This is one of our greatest cars. It is. It spins them from a roll pretty good, too. Wow, look oh. at the distance. Yeah. I think we officially did the right thing with the EFI. Oh, there is no way it would have done any of this like this. Nah. Carburetors. Nah, no it wouldn't way. have. I want to see if it'll light them from a roll, you know, like this. <laughs> oh, it's so fun! This thing's awesome, man. Everyone needs a blower. Everyone needs a Crusher Impala. Yeah. Look at that, it's not overheating. The oil pressure is great, it's got voltage. If it only had much more solid power steering, we'd have something here. <laughs> <laughs>